Hi, my name is Lauren Salerzo, and I'm a training specialist here at Shift4 Payments, the parent company of Shift4 Shop. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to talk to you about how easy it is to manage your online orders through Shift4 Shop. You can easily set up your store's options to manage your customers' orders, process returns, and get items ready to ship so your store practically runs itself. This allows you to have quick, efficient communication with your shoppers that creates happy repeat business for your online store. I'm going to show you how to set up some of these items to go ahead and launch your business, so let's get started. So to actually find these customer editing tools, we're going to use that left-hand navigation menu. And if we select customers, you can see we have a few different options that are located here. So the first option is customer list. This is where you're able to add, edit, and delete customer information. Next is manage groups. This allows you to create groups to give special pricing or discounts to a particular group of people. You can also target a specific group within your mailing campaigns uh, as well. Next is customer relations. So our customer relationship management or CRM tool allows you to correspond with your customers through a managed ticket system. Customers contact you through a contact form on your website and then your Shift4 Shop, Shift Shop software uh, will be automatically keep a record of all of these interactions for you. Next is Affiliates. This allows you to offer a service to your customers in which they can refer additional shoppers to your online store for potential sales. Shift4 Shop will keep track of the customers and automatic, automatically calculate the payout for the Affiliates referral. And then finally we have Gift Registry. This allows customers to create a registry of products for their family and friends to view. Once a customer is registered, their friends can purchase the product selected for the registry and have it sent directly to that registrant's address. The registry will automatically keep a track of what products have been purchased and which ones are still available. So in order to add this one, you will need to add it to the module sections in your store, but this is available for you to use. So let's go ahead and start talking about our customer records. So you can easily view your customers' orders and do things like reset their passwords all from your Shift4 Shop dashboard. So in order to get to our different customers profile, we're going to go to that customers tab and we're going to select the first option, which is customer list. Your customer list is going to show you all of the customer profiles that you have for your store. So hopefully you have more than me. <laughs> I just have one guest in here as John Doe. Um, but you can use filters or you can search specific keywords at the top to find customers and you can view all of their various information. So if I select that gear icon on the right hand side of the screen next to my customer's name, it's going to pull up a drop down menu that I can further edit uh, my customer's profile. So I'm going to go ahead and select that edit button here so we can go ahead and take a look at John Doe's profile. So once I'm in this profile, I can do lots of different things here. This is an advanced edit of my customer contact. So we can do things like see the email that the customer is registered under, we can see, we can't see their password, but we can see if they have failed logins, their billing information, shipping information, etc. Now in the upper right hand corner we also have a drop down, drop down menu that's called actions and you have a couple of other options for editing your customer information here. So you can open a CRM ticket, you can start a phone order, and this is also where you can uh, reset your failed logins for your customers in case that's what they're calling in about. Now we also have a toolbar at the top of the page and you can see we have a lot of different options under here as well. So we're currently under the information tab so that's just going to show you the general information for your customer. We also have the orders tab and that's going to show you the past and present orders that this customer has placed for your store. We have the products tab and that's going to show you which products that your customer has ordered. The CRM tab which is going to show you any tickets that they have open or any previous tickets they may have had with you. We also have reviews which is going to show you the reviews that they've left for your products. We have our waiting list so going to show you what waiting list this customer is a part of. Stats is going to show you their stats and then of course we have affiliate status if they're enrolled in that program for your store. So let's go ahead and take a look at this order information. 
So on the screen, if we select that orders tab, um, that's going to show us all of the current and previous orders that this customer has submitted with your store. So if we just hover over that invoice number, it's going to show us just some quick information like their payment and shipping information. But if we actually select that invoice, it's going to pull up all of the order details for us. So when we look at the order details, we can see lots of specific information on here in terms of the order. So things like where it was sent to, the payment method, the credit card number, what they actually ordered, the shipping, etc. Now for customers that are coming to your store, you also have the option of setting up our guest checkout. So your shoppers are not going to be required to create a customer record if they select this option in your store. So first we need to enable this option in our store if we want to allow guests to check out without indicating that they have a profile with us. So in order to enable that guest checkout, we're going to go to that settings menu and we're going to select our store settings. Now in your store settings, that's where you're going to edit your store information. If you've added your logo to your store, that's going to be on that first tab. Now if we actually go to the third tab over, it's labeled as checkout. Um, we're going to see there's a couple of different options on here. So we want to make sure that the password required is not selected if we're going to let our guests use that guest checkout option. So by unselecting the password is required that's going to allow shoppers to come to your store and purchase items without requiring them to create a profile or putting a password in in order to purchase items from your store. So that's another option for you in terms of helping to manage your customers and the shoppers that are coming to your store. Now let's go ahead and transition over to talk about order processing. So our software enables you to set up, process, and create manual orders with your dashboard. So one of the first things we can do with that is creating a phone order. So in order to create a phone order, we're going to go to the orders tab. And at this point, it's going to pull up a screen like this and we can select start a new order. So in order to start a new order, we are going to first search the product uh, that the customer would like to purchase. And then we have a couple of options for our customer searching. So especially if it's someone who already has a profile with your store, you can see I've started to put that information in here for my customer, John Doe. You can automatically pull up their profile and then it's going to pre-populate all of their information, which is a really easy way to do this. Now, if this one is someone that's calling in and maybe they're a new shopper for your store or they've never purchased anything from you before, you can also create that new, create a new customer tab and you can manually input all of that information as well. So in order to complete a phone order, uh, once we've put in our product and once we've put in our customer information, we're then going to need to select the correct shipping rates that the customer would like. We're going to need to put in the payment method and then we're ready to hit that complete order button. Now you also have a couple of options here in terms of editing. So for example, if the customer wants to have this item shipped to a different address, we have this edit button over on the right hand side of the screen. So you can just edit that information right here. You can do the same thing for billing as well. Now towards the bottom under the order total section, you can also apply coupons and discounts and you can add those options in here as well before selecting complete order. So now that we've got an order that's completed, we need to get this item ready to be shipped out. So we're going to talk about fulfillment. So your shift for shop is going to allow you to print shipping labels directly from your online store manager. So this is really simple and easy to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to create our shipping label setup. So once again, using that left hand navigation menu, we're going to select manage orders and then we're going to select the invoice that we want to create a shipping label for. So we have um, that screen pulled up here. We can see I'm hovering over this invoice. This is the invoice that I'm going to select that I'm going to create a shipping label for. So once I select that invoice, it's going to pull up this detail screen and now I can go into the upper right hand corner and select the drop down menu that says shipping label. Now we have a couple of different options here under shipping label. I can select either discount rates for USPS or I can select other carriers.
So USPS or United States Postal Service is going to allow merchants to set up and pay for their shipping labels monthly. And this also includes a discount on all of your shipping costs. So if USPS works for you and your products, that's definitely the most cost effective version. Now you also have other carriers on here as well. So this indicates legacy shipping labels for UPS, FedEx, some international carriers, etc. So if that works better for your products and your business, you absolutely have the option of choosing that as your sh preferred shipping method as well. So if this is your first time getting shipping set up with your Shift 4 shop, you're going to be prompted to go through the shipping label solution. And this is going to help you configure those initial settings for your store. Now, once you've gone through this for the first time and you've inputted all of your information, then the, typically a screen like this is going to pop up and you're going to be able to automatically indicate what type of shipping that you would like to choose for your guest. Now, because I like USPS, that's the option that I have on here. So you can see I have a couple of different shipping options with the United States Postal Service. Now, regardless of the shipping option that you choose, you're going to be given this pay and print option on the right hand side. So depending on the type of shipping your shopper chooses, you can just select pay and print. You can get that label ready and now your package is ready to be either picked up or dropped off by your selected shipping carrier. And after this, you're going to see a confirmation page where your label can be saved, printed, or voided. So you're going to be able to see the tracking number that was generated for your shipping label right after this point. So now that we've talked about uh, getting orders set up and getting those ready to fulfill, let's talk about our different customer pricing groups and managing different customer groups within your store. So you can split your customer base into as many groups as you need for a variety of purposes. So, you know, for example, if you have wholesale shoppers or a couple of different wholesale accounts that purchase your items, you can set up a specific group for them um, in order to get those discounted rates. So it's really easy to set up and create a customer group. On that customer list, we're just going to go to that second option that's titled Manage Groups. Now we're going to add a new group and this is the pop-up that's going to get us started. So the first thing that we're going to fill out on here is going to be our group name. So this is going to be the name of your pricing group. Our next item is going to be our description. So it's going to be a brief description of the customer group and this is intended for your own internal reference. Next is minimum order. So this is going to specify the minimum order amount that the customers must have in their cart before they're able to take advantage of that pricing level. And then finally we have pricing level. This is uh, where you're going to be able to select which pricing level that this group is going to use. So you're going to have 10 different pricing levels to choose from. Um, and know that you can set this on each individual product under the product advanced tab. Now we would suggest setting up your pricing levels on your products first before going into your pricing level options here. If you don't have any pricing level set up for your group, then it's going to automatically default to the regular price that you have for your regular customers. So, you know, if you're trying to offer a wholesale discount, that's not going to show up for your group unless you've actually edited that option in your product. So make sure that you do that first before getting to the screen. So once we've actually edited and added in our customer group, then it's going to show up automatically in that group's list. Now we can edit further by selecting that gear icon to the right hand side and then going to that edit function in that drop down menu. Now when you select edit, it's going to look pretty similar to the screen that we were just on, except that I've got a couple of other options here. I now have a non-taxable box I can check. So this is going to make the customer group a non-taxable group and it'll waive their taxes and charges on their order. And then the other option I have is allow registration. So when customers add themselves to your store during checkout, your shoppers are going to be able to select which group that they'd like to belong to. So by default, we do have the setting turned off, but you can also um, add this on if you'd like to, or you can just continue to manually move customers to special groups as needed. So that's a little bit of how we manage our groups and the different things that you can do here. Now we're going to transition over to talk about actually return merchandise authorization or RMAs. So the Shift 4 Shops RMA system makes it simple to process returns and exchanges for your customers. So the RMA feature is going to allow you to process returns and exchanges for your customers. 
So an RMA can be initiated by the customer or it can be initiated by you as the merchant any time after an order has been placed. But if you want to allow this option for your customers, first thing we need to do is actually add that feature into your store under the module section. So once you're in modules and you've searched for this RMA feature, we're going to want to make sure that enabled box is selected and then this screen is going to automatically pull up. So if we select change settings, that's going to take us to the settings screen where we can further edit some of our RMA details, which we'll get to in just a moment. Um, but you can set up two different windows for returned merchandise. So on here you can see we have the standard store 30 days. This is typically just set automatically in here, but you can edit this number if you'd like. Now you can also set a different RMA window for a specific product under the advanced tab as well. So if there's a product that say you don't want to offer returns on, you can set that in the advanced tab. But for moving forward, we're going to select this change settings and it's going to pull up this screen for us. Now this is where we can actually edit uh, some of the changes that we want to see here. So we have three return merchandise reasons that are pre-populated for your store. So it's broken, don't like it, it's not what I wanted, and then we've got a couple of different methods on here that our shoppers can choose as well. Now you can edit these to your heart's desire, so if you want to put custom reasons or reasons that are specific to your products, you can go ahead and edit these here. Now if you're going to be adding more than these three options, you're just going to want to make sure that visible box is checked to the right hand side so then that it actually shows up for your shoppers when they're in your store. Now, of course, if we've made any changes here, we're going to want to hit that save button in the upper right hand corner and then those changes are going to be saved to your store. Now, if a customer is initiating an RMA, you're going to get a notification in your store. So first, let's talk about the customer's point of view and then I'm going to walk you through how to actually manage that part in your shift for shop. So after an order has been placed, the shopper can log into their customer account and then they can initiate a return at any time as long as it's within that window. So once the RMA has been sent into you as the, as the merchant, you're going to get an email notification that you know your customer John Doe is trying to process a return. So on the customer's end, they're going to select which items they're returning and the reason and the method for their return on their account page. The customer can also leave comments for you as the merchant if you'd like as well, so that's just another way to gather some more details. Now after initiating the RMA, the customer is going to receive an automated email saying that the return is being processed, but they need to wait for you to respond um, before they actually ship that item back to you in the store. So that's when you're going to get the notification as a merchant here under your manage order section and you can choose to whether either approve or deny that RMA. So we're going to go to the orders tab in our dashboard and then we're going to select manage orders and we can see here on the screen I have an open RMA. So I'm going to select this RMA because I'm going to view it um, and make sure that I'm going to either accept it or deny it. So once I've selected this RMA, I can view all of the details that the customers inputted for their reason for returning, their you know money back method or whatever they choose. And once I've determined that I am going to accept this return back to my store, I'm going to select the more drop down menu and then I'm going to select that option that says send RMA instruction email. So then this is going to initiate that email that is sent to the customer that's going to tell them exactly what they need to do to get that item returned back to my store to finish processing that refund. So that RMA is going to remain in this processing category while you wait for the return of your items. Now once your item has actually been returned back to you, then we're going to want to go back in and we're going to finalize that RMA. So we're once again going to select that RMA and then in the order item section, we're going to select the quantity of items that is returned. We're going to want to then move that status to closed and then we're going to hit that save button in the upper right hand corner. So once you close an RMA, it can't be reopened or modified again. So just keep in mind that if you are finalizing that RMA, you're actually okay. There's no other edits or changes that you need to make before actually processing that return for your guest. 
Now, in addition to just helping guests with return merchandise for your store, you can also issue store credit. So this is also another thing that we're going to need to enable on our store underneath the module section. So use the left hand navigation menu and search for store credit in the module section. We're going to want to make sure that enabled button is selected. And then we're going to have this screen pop up. So store credit is going to allow you to issue credit to your customers that's going to be applied to their next order automatically. And this can be a useful alternative to issuing a customer refund on a purchase or maybe another customer service related issue. So when you're issuing store credit, it is used immediately on your shopper's return visit to your store. So your shopper doesn't necessarily get to choose when they want to apply it. Now there's three different ways that you can issue a store credit to your customer. So you can issue a credit directly to their record, you can issue a credit on a specific order, and then you can also issue a credit during an RMA. So when you're enabling this store credit module, you can select that option that says notify a customer when a credit has been added to their account in any one of those ways, and then you can edit that email that gets sent to the customer from the screen. Now once we've hit saved, we're ready to go. Now we're going to manually look at issuing a credit to a customer. So once again, we're going to go to that left hand navigation menu. We're going to select orders and then manage order. We're going to select the invoice that we want to issue this credit for. And then it's going to pull up these order details. Now in the upper right hand corner, we're going to go to the actions menu. And since we've already initiated our store credit module, I now have an option on here about right in the middle of the screen that says issue store credit. So once you select issue store credit and I'm issuing it on this specific invoice that this customer has with my store, I'm going to then be able to put in the dollar amount for that credit and then I'm going to hit save. And after that, we are good to go. Your customer has been issued the credit and they'll be able to use that on their next purchase. So hopefully you learned a lot today when it comes to uh, editing our customers and their orders and helping them with things like returns. So the countdown is on. Hopefully you feel ready to um, edit your customers and continue to customize your store. When it comes to the competition, it's really not even close. So we aren't kidding when we say that Chef 4 Shop is rocket fuel for your business. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Lauren. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or you can use our knowledge base articles if you have any further questions or you're looking for additional how-tos. Thanks again.